Good morning, it's Tim Piller. Thanks for tuning in to Cyber Snippets. Our Cyber Intel this week begins with Microsoft. They've reported two different threats. The first, it's a proof of concept exploit has been published detailing a spoofing vulnerability in Microsoft Azure service fabric. The flaw allows attackers to gain full administrative permissions and then perform any manner of malicious activity. Microsoft released a partial fix in its October patch Tuesday, and the vulnerability received a 6.4 CVSS score. Second threat, Microsoft has confirmed that it inadvertently exposed information related to thousands of customers following a security lapse that left an endpoint publicly accessible over the internet that didn't require any authentication. This resulted in the potential for unauthenticated access to some businesses transaction data corresponding to interactions between Microsoft and prospective customers, such as the planning or potential implementation and provisioning of Microsoft services. Microsoft emphasized that the business-to-business -business leak was caused by an unintentional misconfiguration on endpoint that is not in use across the Microsoft ecosystem and was not the result of a security vulnerability. Next, Individuals behind Venus ransomware are breaking into publicly exposed remote desktop services with the intention of encrypting any and all Windows devices. Since August of this year, Venus has become more visible and causing chaos. These attacks follow the typical RDP or remote desktop protocol tactics. They break into the network via unsecured access. They stop processes and services that they select, and then they encrypt the desired files. Then they rename the files with a .venus extension. Next, U.S. cybersecurity and intelligence agencies have published a joint advisory warning of attacks perpetrated by a cybercrime gang known as the Dagson Team, primarily targeting the healthcare sector in this country. The Dagson Team is a ransomware and data extortion group that has targeted the healthcare sector with ransomware and data extortion operations since June of this year. And the alert was published Friday by the FBI, CISA, and the Department of Health and Human Services. Next, Advocate Aurora Health has disclosed that by visiting its websites, users may have shared personal information and possibly protected health information with Google and Meta. Advocate Aurora Health is the 11th largest non-for-profit integrated health system in the U.S. and provides care for about 3 million patients. The company used tracking technology provided by Google and Meta to understand how patients and other interact with its websites. Moving on, a phishing email purportedly from LinkedIn with the subject line, we noticed some unusual activity, was discovered targeting users at a travel organization in an attempt to pilfer their credentials on the social media platform. The phishing campaign slipped past Google's email security controls after cheating email authentication checks via SFP and DMARC, according to Armor Box, whose email security system at the victim organization found and stopped the attack pointed at some 500 user inboxes. Next, a cybercrime group known as Vice Society has been linked to multiple ransomware strains in its malicious campaigns aimed at the education, the government, and the retail sectors. The Microsoft Security Threat Intelligence Team, which is tracking the threat cluster under the moniker Dev-0832 said the group avoids deploying ransomware in some cases and rather likely carries out extortion using exfiltrated or stolen data. Vice Society, the cyber crime group, has been active since June of 2021. They've been steadily observed encrypting and exfiltrating victim data and threatening companies with exposure of siphoned information to pressure them into paying a ransom. And then lastly, Cisco has warned, warned of active exploitation attempts targeting a pair of two-year-old security flaws in the Cisco AnyConnect Secure mobility client for Windows. The, the, the vulnerabilities could enable local authenticated attackers to perform DLL hijacking and copy arbitrary files to system directories with elevated privileges. And these are all high-level summaries of active exploits and vulnerabilities. If you need help assessing the potential impact in your environment, let us know. We'd love an opportunity to help. Have a great week. Be safe.